doing online dating, you feel like you have good quality pictures of yourself, but you're wondering if you need more pictures of you kind of active and in a lifestyle that's a little bit more you actually doing things. Um, the answer is, yeah, I think it does make a difference. Um, and I think you probably should, ideally, um, because a profile's photo selection reads as a narrative or a story. Um, and so usually the first photo is going to be something that hooks them of your face or, or something high quality and, and is what's going to get them to keep swiping. And then the rest of those, you want to tell them a little bit about your personality, your values, your interests, your hobbies, your lifestyle, so that they can kind of picture that in their head and get excited more than just like, hey, this guy's hot. Like, yes, people need to find you attractive, um, just like we need to find women attractive to swipe. But I also think it's less important to women overall. It is still important, 100%. But they also, like, there's plenty of dudes that have really hot pictures that are just like this. And they don't get good results because the woman's like, I have no idea what this guy's like. Is he a jerk? Is he fun? Does he care about family? Does he do things? Does he get out of his house? Um, so I don't want you to stress about it. My rule of thumb is let's say there's six photos. Two to three of those will probably be, you know, pictures of just you. And two to four of those, depending on if you only use two of the portrait style, are going to be lifestyle or personality. So you being silly, you in action, you working out, you playing golf, you hanging with friends, you mixing cocktails, you with your dog, you with a niece or nephew, just so people can get a value out of it. This person is compassionate. This person's a book nerd. This person's, you know, adventurous or a risk taker. Um, the good thing, though, I will say is actually some of those photos can be lower quality than you think. I don't want them to be absolute garbage, but I actually think like if you have those high quality photos from a photographer, then mixing in just gen normal photos from like your iPhone or that your friends took actually makes it feel more organic. Um, because like you said, if it's like all really high quality photos, it's like clearly this dude just only gets photos for like photo shoots or whatever. And I think having some photos that look natural um, kind of make it feel accessible and real and candid. Um, just like you see lots of YouTube videos and Twitch streamers, there's lots of people, especially in the tech, who are always high quality and whatever. But then you see a lot of people that are streaming that just are like chill in a white tee like this. I've got a, a decent camera on, but sometimes they don't have a great camera and actually it has higher engagement because it feels real. It feels authentic. So yes, I think it's good to have a few lifestyle or personality photos, but I don't think they actually have to be that high quality if your other photos are high quality. And so that takes some of the stress away. When you're taking lifestyle and personality shots, do they have to be candid even though you might be getting them in a staged intentional way? Um, I think it's totally fine to get them in a staged intentional way. Just you try to look candid in them right? Nobody knows the difference. It's, it's, it's hard to explain because art is so subjective. Um, but it's just a way about like, if it feels really stiff and fake while you're like looking at your cocktail or something like that, um, versus maybe like you're, you're moving and the person's taking a few photos or rapid fire, or they're making you laugh, or you're just changing poses and just like doing a little bit of movement or adjusting your expression or like stirring and then like talking to the person and they snap like a bunch of them, just like 10, 15 of them. One of them is going to feel real. It's going to feel like there's movement or there's expression or there's a little bit of looseness. Um, so I definitely don't think they have to be like captured while you're like unexpectedly candid. Um, because there's so many great photographers and great people who take really candid looking photos in a stage scene. But just, yeah, like move around, change your expression, be silly, talk to your friend, take a breather, don't take it too seriously, get back to whatever the activity is doing, let them talk to you, let them take a bunch of shots. And eventually out of that selection, if you take a dozen or two, one of them is gonna feel really warm. And there's not like an exact science. You can't say like, this is what makes a candid photo because there's like a million, a gajillion permutations. It's just a feeling. He just look at it and says, does this look like he's really focused on setting the exact right tone and his face really posed? Or does it feel like this could have been taken by a friend in the moment? Um, but yeah, don't worry about like, it has to always be organic, definitely set up and even do it yourself, man. Um, right now what I got this camera on is a little flexible $20, like gorilla pod off Amazon. And like, I would do the same thing. I tell guys to do this all the time. You know, you're making coffee, 
prop up your camera, put it on self timer on burst and just let it go to work while you're like pouring a latte or something. And if, you know, one of them will look a little bit more normal. Yeah, it's a little challenging because art again is just in the eye of the person. So you kind of have to get a feel for it. Um, but like I said, volume is everything, man. When you think about Sarah, you know, you think the, the difference between a great photographer and a good photographer sometimes besides their eye is they will make you take a lot of photos, right? Uh, Sarah gave us a selection of whatever, a couple of dozen photos. If you look at probably her original of each person, it was like a hundred, right? And then they're just narrowed down to what feels real.